From the Oklahoma Newsroom, this is an OSU update. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Kyle Fredrickson. Kyle, as Oklahoma State prepares to head to TCU for an 11 o'clock kick on Saturday, there'll be a familiar face on that purple and black sideline, that being J.W. Walsh, a uh, grad assistant now on the TCU staff. And I think that brings back memories of what we saw last year out of Walsh really made OSU super effective in the red zone down inside that 20 yard line. Now that he's gone, where do the Cowboys stand this year compared to just how good they were, just how good he helped to make them last year? Well, I think living up to that standard was going to be impossible from the get-go, no matter how talented Mason Rudolph might be. Uh, you know, the Cowboys got in the red zone 60 times last season, and only five times didn't come away with points. I mean, that's the, the sort of efficiency that I think offensive coordinators dream of. But when you're able to run that option uh, set that uh, Walsh was able to be so effective in, you know, that's the same kind of offense we see out of the Georgia Techs and the Navies and those are always traditionally the teams uh, that are the most efficient in the red zone because it's so difficult to account for that extra player. So in terms of OSU this season, uh, those numbers have declined. The, the efficiency in the red zone, uh, about 10 points or less, uh, fewer than a year ago in terms of getting touchdowns or field goals. Mm -hmm. But the Cowboys have really found ways to be a little bit creative uh, in different ways than they were last year. Uh, Mason Rudolph, never traditionally a runner in this offense, has scored three rushing touchdowns in the past six games. Uh, you know, at the same time, the Cowboys have a, a two tailback uh, tandem and Chris Carson and, and uh, Justice Hill that really provides some physicality in the red zone the Cowboys didn't have out of that position a year ago uh, behind an offensive line that's made some pretty big strides. So it's not what it used to be, but considering all the variables and considering reaching those marks from a year ago without a Walsh just seems impossible. I think the Cowboys really like where they're at with that facet of their game. When I think that number we looked at too last year, 40 of the 60 times were touchdowns. So, you know, two thirds of the time you're getting not only points, but getting touchdowns. Really impressive there. But you mentioned the run game and how it's evolved this season with the running backs, with the offensive line. But we also have seen Mason Rudolph you know, call his own number, <laughs> right. even in the zone read, which I don't know if we necessarily thought this would be a guy that would even want to run zone read and then would want to keep the ball himself in those situations. Right. With that frame, I mean, you're 6'5", you're 235 pounds, you're able to run over guys. You might as well do it if, if you're capable. Uh, it makes Mike Gundy a little bit nervous being the injury risk that's involved. Uh, but you're right, Mason Rudolph has used that zone read pretty effectively. Uh, we saw it last week with, a, I think, a nine-yard touchdown scramble uh, against Texas Tech where he really pulled that ball out of Justice Hill's chest, came around the edge, and went through some contact for a score. It's just, uh, like I mentioned before, it's a numbers game. When you get that close to the goal line, if you're able to match up every offensive player with every defensive player, uh, a lot of times that's going to give Mason Rudolph uh, one less pair of eyes on him where he can make that play if he only has to get uh, five, uh, you know, eight, ten yards. Uh, he's able to get that much. Now, he'll be the first to tell you he's no JW. He, he can't rush like he did. The, that, that type of athleticism uh, was very unique in what he was able to do. Uh, but the good thing about Mason Rudolph is they can score it anywhere on the field. Uh, you know, his, he's got eight touchdown passes to James Washington this year uh, and each one of them averages more than 47 yards so wow. it's almost as if once they cross midfield they're looking to score where they don't even have to worry about their red zone offense. Hey lastly we talk about J.W. Walsh being on that TCU sideline. He obviously knows this offense, knows a lot of it, knows the ins and outs, the intricacies, some of the calls. Any cause for concern when uh, we know like a few years ago Baker Mayfield makes a return to Texas Tech and may have helped to, to steal some signals for Oklahoma. Any chance that that becomes an issue for Oklahoma State on Saturday? I think from the moment that it was announced that Walsh was going there, the coaching staff was probably preparing for this week thinking, okay, uh, we have a former quarterback on the other sideline. We have to account for this because you're right. Uh, with the way that plays are called and signaled in, there's a lot of uniformity, uh, you know, in how OSU has done it and trying to figure out season to season how to relay them quickly and be secretive. So for them to go in without a new game plan, you're asking for disaster. So there's no doubt that they're going to have some system in place uh, to turn to that. And part of that is the, the three hat system we've talked about before mm -hmm. uh, with having different signal callers making different signals. Uh, that way, even if Walsh thinks he knows what he sees is happening, uh, he might not be sure if that's the call that's actually going in. And you got to try to watch three guys at once if right. you're in their situation. So really interesting to watch. Uh, I know it'll be a sidelight to a game that has a lot of implications. Again, 11 o'clock kick on Saturday down at TCU. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.